I'm Mike Smith at the Fayette County Jail where we're talking with Fayette County Sheriff Vernon Stanforth who takes us on a tour inside their new 20 plus million dollar facility. And we'll get to that right after this. Prior to inmates occupying the new Fayette County Jail, Sheriff Stanforth takes us through the jail's public entrance for a look behind the scenes. This is probably as far as most public will ever go into the jail once it's opened and we receive inmates because everything beyond this door, that's a secure door. No one can get in that door, including me, until I ask to be let in and the central control that will pick it up on the camera, it'll, it'll show who's at the door, I identify myself, and then he'll unlock the door, and then I can go through. Now the public can come in here, and we're gonna have, we're gonna have several different video visitation options. During the day, from like eight o'clock till 11 o'clock at night, you can video uh, visit with your family anytime you want. Now, we're gonna give every inmate 30 minutes of weekly a, vis a video visitation or phone visitation time, a combination of those, a total of 30 minutes a day will be free time that we will give the inmate, each inmate, every week to visit. After that, they can buy additional time. So they can use their time wisely, or they can just, you know, you know, they want to talk to all their girlfriends at one time, you know, and use up that 30 minutes. They can if they want to talk to their kids, their, 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 sp their spouse, their parents, you know, significant others, they can use that 30 minutes, but if they want to go beyond, if they go beyond that, then they're going to have to buy that time through their commissary process. What we've made it here is you can, you will be able to go on your own phone, mm -hmm. and if you've got an iPhone, for example, you can, you, you can actually do video visitations like a Zoom, mm -hmm. uh, so that they can sit at home and talk to their loved one in jail. Uh, any of those prescribed, it's a prescribed hour. I mean, you, you have to log in, the inmate wants to log in and schedule a time that's on that allowable month in the system. So if they want to talk 15 minutes, they can go in from 10 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. And at 10.15 a.m., it shuts off. So if they want to buy another block of 15 minute time, they can do that. They can buy as much as they want to buy. That's up to, up to them on the commissary. But after that first 30 minutes, yeah. but if you don't have a telephone, you don't have a computer, we've got it set up here that you can do the same thing. And, and this, is, this is the public access of, on a, vi, on a vi, video visitation. Um, when they come in here, of course this is the traditional type of video, or vi, visitation area. We'll have the traditional uh, on-site where you can actually pick up a ton, the you know, inmate will be brought on one side, uh, the families are on this side and they can talk on uh, privately on the telephone to, to cover that. And we also, behind you, we have the, uh, we have three monitors, computer monitors, and that's so they can actually come in with a scheduled video visitation. They never have to leave their cells. Family come in here, if they don't have a computer, don't have an iPhone, they come in and actually sit up here on their prescribed time, they pick in, they log in, the, the uh, inmate will know that it's their time, they'll log in up there, and uh, the system will kick on and they can do their visitation here without ever moving inmates. So, uh, but those that don't have that ability, or don't have the money to buy those extra time, they can schedule. It's limited to do face-to-face -face here. This doesn't cost them anything, but it's very limited uh, because that, that takes manpower uh, for us to schedule and we're gonna, we have to stand down here with them while they're on that call. But we're still providing that, uh, that uh, venue yeah. of visitation. You're, you're permitted to enter in here. This door will click, unlock, you can come in. Now we're in, you come into this chamber and this, the entire facility has what we call an interlock system. So which means the system itself will not allow this door to open if that door is open. So you'd have to come in here, that door has to shut just like it did and it will lock. And then the monitor, the camera monitors on, the, the uh, central control knows that you're standing here and this door will open up and then you can come in. That's a that's so that if there's inmates by any chance they, they they're going to hit a wall somewhere they can't get out even though they may hit one open door they'll not hit two open doors. So now is that standard for any jail that's built? It is today. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much standard. You know, it's, what we've done here. This is nothing 
out of the ordinary and anything we've in, it's incorporated here. We've incorporated the newest technology. Uh, we've tried to incorporate the newest technology. Some of it just like, you know, this is, that's age old technology there, you know, as far as that goes. It beats what we have now. We have a, we have a metal, metal plate over a door and uh, with holes drilled through it, and that's what you speak in. That's the 1884 method, <laughs> you know, works. Um, but as, this is, a, this is a, the public hallway, this is the, uh, the attorney client room. This is the booking area over here. We have a lot of, you notice we have a lot of windows. The idea is so we can see everything at any time. Every, and when you can't walk in this building without walking by a window. And seeing, so a, a deputy working booking and if we have an attorney over here, we can't hear what he's saying, but we can see what he's saying. We can vis visually check him, as well as we can monitor uh, on, a, on a camera what's, that, that, he's being, that he's safe and there's no problem in there. But we have windows, literally windows everywhere. Mm -hmm. so. And that's just, that's kind of the trend as well. Um, this is the common corridor. Um, This is the, uh, we have what, what we call a roundabout. So this room is central control, and that's the heartbeat of the entire operation. In that room, you can see everything, even though it's a square building, but inside we have, we have angled rooms, and every room angles into this corridor. Uh, so that it's a, it narrows down. So you got, uh, for example, you got, this is the kitchen. The kitchen is wider than this eight foot window. But we've got, you know, it, the way it looks, when you look into the that window, you're seeing the entire kitchen, not just the walls so straight back. So everything is, is angled in such a way to uh, um, make that accommodation. The um, kitchen, uh, we're, you know, we've got the kitchen staff now, they're actually doing their own cleaning and, and uh, they'll, be, they'll be turning everything on soon and start practicing in the preparation of meals. We're going from an 1884 kitchen to a 2021 kitchen. You know, one thing they don't do is load the firewood into the stove. It, it is a gas furnace, a, a stove, but but it's still the, the same room that was used as a kitchen in 1884 is today still used as a kitchen at our old jail. And uh, so they, this is for the staff. This is a, a tremendous change. Do you use trustees at all? Yeah, uh, the goal is we use trustees. Because it's now a modern and, 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 and larger facility, uh, some inmates that are going to be long term, they will have to go through a TB test and they'll go through training uh, if they're going to be here long enough. And they'll be assigned to the kitchen and they can help in the preparation of food. Right now, we don't, they don't do any preparation, they just do cleaning. Uh, and we'll do some, inmates will do the dishes, inmates will do a lot of the, the uh, labor work in the kitchen itself. But it's potentially that because we've expanded the operation, we will be able to train them to prepare food. And that'll be part of the process as well. But they have to meet certain health standards being able to do that. They can't have a communicable disease. They can't have, you know, they can't have a skin disease, there's things like that. They, have to, they can't have TB, they, you know. So if, if they pass health-wise and, and for the health standards, then they can also help prepare food. Now, you may have a kitchen staff that says, I don't need anybody help me. Get out of my kitchen. <laughs> you can do the dishes, but you're not going to cook on my stove. You know, uh, that'll be up to the, you know, and you know, we're going from, you know, making uh, 60 meals a day, or, or a meal, to probably 150 meals. So that's a big change for them, a lot more work. This is the utility hallway. Okay. So everything off of this is, is, uh, the, the kitchen, the laundry room, the service dock. This is the loading dock. This is the, all of our, all of our loading truck, all of our truck delivery will come in here. And you see, this is some of the first delivery of, of products here. Um, it's brought here, and then it will be moved to whatever area of the building is gonna be used at or stored for long term. A lot of that is not, uh, is not stored stuff. That's just things we haven't put together yet, like the pots and pans and some of the supplies in the kitchen. Uh, but this is this area will be full of stuff all the time, and the inmates will be working here as well. That will be the part of their assignment. Uh, they'll come in. They'll once it's delivered here, the, we load it into this room. We'll bring inmates in. They'll take it to the kitchen, take it to this warehouse or wherever it's supposed to be stored. So that's part of their uh, once again their ability to work within the jail system itself. Uh, once again, 
this is a secure door. Once this, this door is open, that door can't open. Uh, so once the delivery is made, nobody can get in here until the delivery is completed, that door goes down, then this door can be opened and the inmates can come in and, and start working. Same way with these doors, they're all interlocked, so any one of these doors is open, the other doors can't open, so that, and that's to prevent escapes, so, or hopefully prevent escapes. So, you know, a lot of the empty rooms you'll see are, are actually going to be offices. Um, And all the doors are, 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 are coded that are not correction doors. Correction doors are controlled by central control. Service utility doors are we can individually will we'll have coded numbers to get in or, or a swipe key to get in. Um, but that's, you won't find too many of those outside of the utility hallway because everything else is in the, is a corrections, a detention facility. Hello. So we uh, when guys come in and they're gonna we're doing a little bit of a walk through the building and just letting them see that they're they're preparing our, our uh, deep fryers. You know we've got the, the facility come with all new equipment. We went from a refrigerator to a walk-in cooler. Yeah, and then, um, and once again, we had multiple upright um, freezers, and now we've got inside the cooler we have our own a, a walk-in freezer. So we don't have. Where's my jacket? But we right now we operate with. Uh, I, I think it's five freezers uptown, and they're almost all of them are 30 years old. Commercial laundry uh, that'll be that'll probably be functioning 24 hours a day, more than likely. Uh, right now, this our correction staff is is learning how to use that, so they can they in turn can train uh, detention um, inmates to, to to operate the laundry, and we'll have somebody probably assigned to the laundry. Uh, they'll do shift work, and they'll probably do. You know, 24 hours a day we'll have inmates doing laundry. There's, we're going to go through that much stuff. This is central control. This room is a locked room. The only way you can get in that door after we activate it is this person has to let you in. This person never has to leave this confined. The idea is you can sit here and see the entire facility. The structure is built so that you never have to go through one cell block to get to another cell block. That uh, we have uh, a stairwell that will go to the back side of this stair and that's what the inmates and the staff will use. By designing the structure this way, we can classify inmates so they never, so one never sees the other uh, classification or male and female. The, the, the facility is gender neutral in that any cell block can be used for male or females and by based on our population demand. This is the booking area. Everybody will see this at some point in their either their career or their uh, tenure as a as a uh, uh, when they're when they were brought in that door from the sally port. We'll walk back through there as well. But we have three holding cells. Um, we have the, the body scanners already been installed. The inmates have been brought in where you're standing right now. Uh, they'll they'll stand against this wall, and the camera will take their picture. Um, and we don't have to have a booking camera like the old days where you hold up the little chart. They'll stand here, they'll get their picture taken, and then they'll be processed, fingerprinted, and so forth. And then when they're done, they'll be put in the holding cell until they can be processed upstairs. This is the intake shower. Um, this is the, uh, we, have a, we have a full medical room. Um, medical staff will be, will be housed in the booking area. Inmates will be brought down and they can be, they can be assessed. This is a multiple locked door, so medic medication will be kept in here and uh, uh, medicine will be locked in, a, in its own separate cabinet. Uh, that cabinet will be locked, everything will be locked. Uh, but if the medication will be, behind, will be locked in the cabinet behind a locked door, behind a locked door. This is a, uh, space utilization was critical on everything we did here. Uh, we didn't overbuild 
uh, but we tried to use every square foot to, have to accommodate. So what we're doing is we're decided to shrink wrap. So when an inmate comes in, we're gonna take their clothes and we're gonna shrink wrap their clothes and store them the entire time they're here. So as an example, we shrink, we shrunk wrap this. This is on intake, they will be given a blanket, a sheet, uh, and it's a you know it's a it's like a, a glove for the uh, mattress, uh, and th they'll give a, a towel and a wash rag, um, and I mean this this if th before this is shrunk wrap this is probably would have been that tall of a stack of you know the blanket everything that that person is given and we shrunk wrap it and so that'll be opened up that'll be given to the inmate um, and we'll take their clothes we do the same thing we shrink wrap it and that's for several reasons, because of COVID and, and communicable diseases of any kind, not just COVID. But whatever they have on their person, it's now sealed. And we don't have to smell uh, your clothes that's been hanging in here for three months. If they, if they come in wet, we can, we can actually wash them and, and prepare them. But if it's just soiled clothes, just old clothes, that sometimes will have an odor to them. And tennis shoes, I mean, some of these people, they only have one pair of shoes and that's all they have. And we take those, and, and now we don't, we don't want to have to smell those shoes for the next three months, so we shrink wrap them. And they'll be housed, they'll be put in, the, in these uh, vented bags and with a number, and so this inmate, when, he, when he's discharged, will know that number 30 is his property, and we'll take it out, we can open up the zip bag and give it to him, and he can get, you know. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a space utilization. The whole, the whole thing is to maximize the space. We've, uh, this is part of our correction staff. We've been bringing them out. They've been actually working out here so they get to know the facility more intimately. And so these guys have been working all week out here. So they will know this entire place by the time of the end of their week. We, at least we hope they get to know the place. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is the last door that is part of the secured uh, detention. Uh, once you're in here, and the reason I have two, di we have two different buildings, uh, and that was economics. The correction building, the detention facility has to be built to a standard uh, to detain people, and which uh, rebar in every wall, in exterior and interior walls have to be rebarred every eight inches, and that's expensive. The walls have to be filled with concrete, that's expensive. Everything has to be detention grade. Once you leave this building, that building, you're now in the administration building. It's just a commercial office building. And we were able to build this at much, uh, more, much less uh, expense. So. The cost of the new facility is projected to reach up to $24 million using mostly a USDA loan that was originally for a 40-year payback, but the county commissioners negotiated a 30-year payback at a lower interest rate. Litter Media would like to thank Sheriff Stanforth and his staff for allowing our cameras to go behind the scenes. I'm Mike Smith, Litter Media.